Hello, I am Dr. Azaz from MedicoVisual.com and in today's visual lecture, we will talk about the development of cochlea. So previously, we have already discussed the gross development of cochlea that basically this is the secule, the primitive secule or the swelling which is going to form the secule or this is basically the primordium of secule. Now from this secule, invagination arises, rather I should say an evagination arises and which curls and twists like a snail to form this tube-like cochlea. So basically this is the secular swelling and from the secular swelling the cochlea arise. So cochlea basically arises from the secule. How can you remember this? Well, you can remember it like this. You remember the word sexy. Well, not that sexy. Ear is not sexy, although it is curvy, but not every curvy thing is sexy. I should write it here. It is sec, sexy, sexy. Actually, it should be sac, sac, sexy. <laughs> so from here you can remember that sexy. So secule from the secule, the cochlea arises. Secule, sac, sac, secule, and c for cochlea. So sexy, sexy. <laughs> so, so with this weird mnemonic, I hope you can remember. Although it is cringy, I think, but you can remember that uh, the cochlea develops from the secule. So now, what we will do is that what we will see that how at the histological level how the cochlea develops. So what I am gonna do is that I am just gonna remove a part of the cochlea, a very small part of the cochlea and we will see its section. Let me explain to you what I mean. So for example, let's suppose I am gonna cut it from here like this and a very tiny very small section will be observed if we cut it from here and if we see it from front like this that is what we will see in the next part of this lecture and we will see how the cochlea develops right now it's just a hollow tube of course it should not be a hollow tube but before that please also remember that around whole this whole this apparatus the mesenchyme surrounds all this apparatus so you know it is surrounded by the mesenchyme and this mesenchyme will form the aortic capsule. We have already discussed these things. So let's now go into the section of cochlea and we will see how it develops further. So here you can see this is basically the section of the cochlea and centrally you can see this one is the membranous, membranous labyrinth, membranous labyrinth which is you must be knowing that filled with the endolymph so it is basically filled with endolymph now initially it was just that membranous labyrinth now around this membranous labyrinth it got surrounded this membranous labyrinth it got surrounded by the mesenchyme it got surrounded by a thick layer of mesenchyme and this mesenchyme it first forms a cartilaginous capsule and then it forms a bony capsule right so this bony capsule will be formed around it and that capsule is called aortic capsule so this is very important concept now let's see what happens with this bony labyrinth and what happens exactly with this aortic capsule so let's watch the animation so first it will tilt slightly towards the towards one side and it will change its shape like this i am talking about the membranous labyrinth of the cochlea by the way this membranous labyrinth of cochlea it is also called cochlear duct what it is called it is called cochlear duct so this cochlear duct it will assume a shape of more of a triangle like this and then what will happen that uh, even the aortic capsule's shape will also slightly change and then what will happen that some small spaces will arise within this aortic capsule and they will confluence like this to form two cavities within this aortic capsule so basically this was first a solid you can say it was a solid block of mesenchyme or solid block of bony tissue 
right and then within that solid block small spaces arise and these spaces they coalesce to form these two cavities basically here they look like cavities but actually these are long tubes of course you do not forget that this is a long cochlea so it must be extending so you know this is like a long long tube long curled tube right so here is this this tube right and then there is this other tube i hope you can understand what i mean between these two we have another tube so now we have these three tubes this tube the top one it is called scala vestibuli it is called scala vestibuli this lower one is called scala tympani and the middle one is basically the cochlear duct and it is also called scala media now here one thing i want to make clear that these are the two terms which are very similar this is called cochlear duct there is a term called cochlear duct and then there is the term called scala media what is the difference between scala media and cochlear duct well actually according to literature there is not much difference according to most of the literature that i went through there is not much difference between the cochlear duct and scala media these two terms are used interchangeably but to be very precise some of the authors they describe it like this that this space this whole this space which is filled with endolymph this space is called scala media by the way it is not completely filled with endolymph later we will see that the part of organ of corti it is also filled with perilymph so whole this space is called scala media right and whole this space along with these walls along with these walls like this if we talk about the walls if we take walls into consideration then this becomes a duct called cochlear duct so cochlear duct is space plus space plus walls right this wall and this wall i will tell you what are these walls and scala media is just the inner space the inner space of this tube right so you can say just like a tube if we talk about that tube as a whole that tube is the duct right tube is the duct cochlear duct and if we just talk about the lumen of the tube or pipe that is the scala media so i hope you are very clear about this concept now let's move forward now this top wall of this cochlear duct this wall it is basically a thin membrane rather i should say it will form a thin membrane it will form a thin membrane and this thin membrane is between the scala vestibuli and scala media and hence it is termed as vestibular membrane vestibular membrane and it has also got another name it is also called reasoner's membrane and then this membrane here here another membrane will form and this membrane will be called basement not basement basilar basilar membrane so this is basilar membrane here you can see that the bony extension from the aortic capsule arises you can see here this is the bony extension and this bony extension is basically spirally arranged as you know the the cochlea it is spiral of course if we extend it so we will see that it is spiral so naturally this bony extension is also spiral so let me show you exactly here is this bony extension what i mean by this is that bone should be like this but here there is that extension of bone and this bony uh, layer it is called osseous or osseous osseous spiral spiral lamina and this os osseous spiral lamina it is connected with what is this membrane basilar membrane and by the way above that here this connective tissue part there is a a bulk of connective tissue a soft connective tissue above it above this osseous spiral lamina and medial to uh, not medial lateral to the this bone it is called spiral limbus it is called spiral 
spiral limbus right so now let's move forward now we will see what happens here you can see this there is no organ of hearing right now so we will see how the organ of hearing develops and by the way another important thing here this this part this part of the cochlear duct this is basically the lateral wall of the cochlear duct this lateral wall of the cochlear duct what it will do is that it will form the endolymph it will release the endolymph it is i have shown it in the pink color because there are a lot of blood vessels here there are a lot of blood capillaries here and these blood capillaries they secrete the potassium rich endolymph into the the scala media they release the potassium rich endolymph in in the scala media and this this part is basically called stria stria vascularis stria vascularis so right now there is no organ of hearing so we will see how it develops first what will happen that uh, these sporting cells will develop so you see there are these different types of sporting cells right now you do not need to go into details of these types of sporting cells but you just remember they that they are arranged in a specific particular arrangement why this specific particular arrangement is there i don't know to be honest i don't really know but what i know is that this type of arrangement is important for hearing so from this from this wall from the wall of this cochlear duct basically this inferior wall of this cochlear duct two types of cells develop one is the different types of different varieties of supporting cells and the other one are the real functional cells that are the hair cells these are the actual functional cells these are the hair cells as the name indicate the the supporting cells they are involved in supporting these uh, these uh, these other cells they provide structural as well as functional support for example they are important in maintaining the ionic balance right and they also provide structure structural integrity and structural support that for example these these oval shaped inner hair cells these are the most important one they are you know surrounded by these supporting cells you see they are surrounded by these supporting cells and they are nourished by these supporting cells and here these outer hair cells they are also surrounded and nicely nourished by these these supporting cells these are basically the inner phalangeal cells of course phalangeal cells are one of the types of supporting cells and these are the outer phalangeal cells that support the these outer hair cells and if you look carefully that the extensions arise from these outer phalangeal cells and they sort of surround the hair cells like this and then these are the the other cells i think for this lecture you don't you do not need to remember the types of supporting cells but i will just tell you here that these are the pillar cells uh, the outer and inner pillar cells and these cells and these uh, what are these uh, these uh, outer hair cells their extension and then there are these hansen cells and these these inner inner phalangeal cells all these cells they are tightly connected at the top they are tightly connected and they form a barrier right they form a special barrier that fluid cannot reach Flu fluid from this part cannot reach below and fluid from here cannot reach upward so this special type of barrier is called reticular lamina because of this reticular lamina what actually happens let me explain a very important concept here first let me tell you that there are lots of different spaces this is for example the inner tunnel then there is here the outer tunnel and you see there are different spaces let's not go into the name of names of these spaces so what actually happens that there are the fluid there is a fluid within these spaces and uh, let me tell you here briefly so you know that within this scala media here is the endolymph right 
and within this scalar tamponade this is scalar tamponade we have perilymph now perilymph can cross the basilar membrane and it can enter into these spaces like this into these spaces and as this perilymph enters into these spaces now it is called now this fluid has another name now it is called corticolymph corticolymph or cochlear lymph so this corticolymph is basically modified perilymph that reaches into these spaces right and here we have endolymph now here the interesting thing happens that the tops of these hair cells they are bathed with endolymph the top part of hair cells that is bathed with endolymph and that endolymph cannot reach to the basal portions of these hair cells and basal portions of these hair cells is basically they are basically bathed with perilymph or they are basically bathed with corticolymph which is just a slightly modified perilymph perilymph that is uh, that is surrounding these hair cells and that is present within these tunnels within these spaces formed by these sporting cells and this is limited by this this layer called reticular lamina reticular lamina now what is the significance of this I didn't want to go into details of physiology but I don't know why now I am enjoying it so much that I want to tell you each and every minute detail here but I will try to refrain into going into too much details but let's just briefly let me just briefly tell you that for example this is a hair cell now you see its top part is bathed with you see here here is the reticular lamina now its top part is bathed with high potassium high potassium endolymph and its basolateral parts are bathed with low potassium but high sodium perilymph now what is the significance of this you see there is too much concentration gradient that has been established now what will happen that the potassium will go inside from these top parts uh, you see i i have already told you the details that potassium will go inside through this particular channel specific channels into these uh, cilia now potassium will go into these cilia through these cilia and come into the cell now this potassium there is because there is it is surrounded by very low potassium perilymph so this potassium will try to rush into this perilymph so there is a lot of concentration gradient that has been established so more and more potassium can come into this perilymph and as a result here temporarily there will be low potassium that will be established so more potassium again can come inside and then as the potassium more and more potassium comes here within the perilymph you know perilymph should remain low potassium fluid so that is why the sporting cells here they will pick up this potassium and it, they will recycle the potassium so imagine here is this these sporting cells so they will pick up potassium that came here from the hair cells first they came into the hair cell and then from hair cells they came into this corticolymph and from this corticolymph the sporting cells will pick up this potassium and it will be recycled again into this scalar media into this remaining part of scalar media of course whole of this is scalar media even the organ of corti is situated uh, on the scalar media so that is the importance of this beautiful system you see potassium can be easily recycled and concentration gradient can be maintained and sporting cells has lots of importance here they are not just the structurally sporting cells they are also functionally sporting cells that is why i said that sporting cells are also involved in ionic balance this mechanism is so beautiful we will see it in more details when we will talk about the physiology of ear you just imagine that if endolymph surrounded the cells from all side what would have happened for example if the endolymph 
it surrounded the cells from all side there wouldn't be sufficient concentration difference for the potassium so potassium would like to remain within this cell and even due to that back pressure of not having much difference in the concentration gradient the potassium won't be uh, like energized enough it won't be happy enough to rush into the cell from the scalar media so the depolarization of the cell would have been much difficult so thank god the nature has been kind enough to us that it has provided such beautiful mechanisms we have this this speci special arrangement that upper part of the same cell is bathed with endolymph and the basolateral part of the same hair cell it is bathed with another low potassium fluid another totally different fluid called perilymph so that is how due to the presence of these this arrangement these cells they remain working if the situation was not there these cells won't work wow i just love explaining these beautiful mechanisms of nature this is so amazing and fascinating isn't it finally let me tell you what happens that from this spiral limbus there are special cells within the spiral limbus and these cells they secrete an acellular jelly like covering and this acellular jelly like covering secreted by these cells of spiral limbus it is called tectorial membrane what it is called tectorial tectorial membrane tectorial it is just like a tent so tectorial membrane so tectorial membrane on this organ of corti by the way this whole this organ of hearing it is called organ of corti so this tectorial membrane is similar to copula and if we talk about semicircular canal we have the copula and if we talk about the autolithic organs we have that autolithic membrane so basically it is the analog of autolithic membrane as well as the copula in the organ of corti now how this organ of corti work we will briefly discuss it in the next part of this lecture but briefly here let me tell you that what happens that as the as the sound enters into this organ of corti what will happen that this basilar membrane will vibrate and as the basilar membrane vibrates these hair cells they will you you see they will sort of rub against the tectorial membrane right so they will rub against the tectorial membrane and their cilia will bend and as their cilia will bend their special potassium channels will open that story you already know we have discussed it previously that potassium channels will open and potassium will rush into it now here what is the what is the function of outer hair cells let me exactly tell you where are the outer hair cells so this is the inner hair cell basically there is a single row of inner hair cell inner hair cell and these are the outer hair cells and basically we have three rows of outer hair cells but interestingly 90% from here the nerve is going like this by the way and here also the nerve is going like this 90% of dendritic process of sensory neurons they reach to which inner hair cells inner hair cells but only 10% they reach to outer hair cells so that is why the inner hair cells are most important and they are directly involved in the hearing process but outer hair cells these are indirectly involved in hearing process but still they are very important so rather than calling a, the, rather than classifying them as sporting cells we actually consider them as hair cells one of the reason is that because they have that hair like cilia as well the other reason is that they are very important why they are important i will just briefly talk about that uh, there is a hypothesis to explain this so here we have an outer hair cell and here we have an inner hair cell now here is a protein and here is that's the schematic representation of this protein and this protein is called prestin prestin protein 
Now, as this outer hair cell depolarizes, of course, the sound waves causes the vibration of basilar membrane, and with its vibration, the hair cells will bend against the tectorial membrane. They will rub and they will bend, and they will the potassium channels will open. And as the cell depolarizes, what will happen? That the depolarization will activate the prestin protein, and as the prestin protein activates, it is just like this spring that it. Will will contract like this and as it contracts the outer hair cell shortens quite a lot and as it repolarizes as the outer hair cells as it repolarizes again it goes back what is the significance of this you know we have this tectorial membrane here this is hypothetical mechanism we are not 100% sure but what we know is that as the outer hair cells are damaged we are not able to hear properly so the reason is the the presence of this prestin protein and the hypothesis is that as the prestin proteins leads to shortening of outer hair cells you see tectorial membrane will become closer to inner hair cells this will lead to a more sharp response to the sound so as the tectorial membrane as it becomes closer to the the inner hair cell you can see that this inner hair cell can rub more easily against this tectorial membrane so it will become much more sensitive to sound it will become much more sensitive to sound as compared to as compared to if there was no shortening of this outer hair cells so this is due to presence of prestin protein mediated shortening of the outer hair cells that the tectorial membrane it becomes slightly lower and it leads to more sensitivity to the presence of certain frequency sounds